Hey everybody, Jazzy here with another Don't Starve Together dedicated server guide. Today I want to show you how to create and change world settings on your server. Now, as of the March quality of life update, world settings can now be changed after a world gets created. All the options you see when you create a new world are now divided into two sections, world settings and world generation. The generation options only affect how the world is initially created, but everything under world settings can be changed at any time. So you can change the frequency of hound waves, Waves, slow down regrowth, turn events on or off. You could even change the day-night cycle and the length of seasons. So there's a lot of potential in here for spicing up your world after it gets generated. Now in a client hosted game, you set and change these settings from your world startup page. But to do this on a dedicated server, we will be creating some world gen override files. These contain all of the settings for the world and we're gonna make one for both the master and cave shard. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is navigate to our dedicated server folder and we're gonna go into our master folder. We are going to create a new document, start with text document, but we're gonna change the extension. Uh, we're gonna call this world gen override.lua and you should get this notification on Windows that you are changing the file extension. That's what we want. If you don't get that notification and it just stays as a text document, what you should check is under this view menu, make sure that file name extensions is turned on because the only way you can change a file name extension is if you can actually view it. So just make sure that's uh, enabled. All right, once you make this, go ahead and uh, double click to open it up with any old text editor. I'm gonna provide pastebin links for the template code for each of these world gen override files, but this is basically what it looks like in the master world gen override. It just has this return starting off and then override needs to be set to true. Inside these brackets, that is where we will put each of the world settings or generation settings that we want to set to non-default. Now I'm gonna leave a couple notes for myself just so that I know exactly what settings I want to change. So I'm gonna set wildfires to, uh, well, whatever, off. I'm going, and you can do two hyphens, comment, that won't change the code. I'm going to set regrowth to, I'm gonna turn regrowth completely off. Oh hell, let's just look at the settings. A bunch of new settings got added in this update. Tell you what, let's say hound attacks. What are options there? We can set hound attacks to little. Say we want to do that. Hey, you know what? I really like fighting cloths, so let's just set cloths to tons. Now this is just placeholder text. What we got to do now is find the code that coincides with these options and paste those into the code. I'm also going to provide a link to this article on the clay forms, which is probably the most important article that's been posted since the update. Check it out. Electrally has provided a complete list of every world generation and setting option for you to use in your world gen overrides. This one's for the forest and this one is for all the cave stuff. Yeah, as you can see, there's quite a bit that's been added. And from here, we just take the options that we want and paste them directly into our code. And you don't need to copy paste the whole thing, just the lines that you want to override. In other words, the ones that you don't want to be default. So for example, here's the line for wildfires. I'm just gonna triple click that line and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it directly into the code. Now on each line, you'll see all the options listed over here. The words in the parentheses are what each option corresponds to inside the client, but the actual code words that we're going to use are the ones outside the parentheses. For example, we want wildfires to none, so we're going to use the parameter never. So now we can delete default for wildfires and replace it with never. And then all of the commented code afterwards, we could just delete it. We don't need it anymore. All right, now we're going to do the same thing for regrowth. And regrowth is regrowth multiplier. We want to turn this completely off. So again, we're going to use the parameter never. Okay, here's the line for hound attacks. We're going to copy paste that. So in game, there's an option for little. So we're going to use the parameter rare. There we go and delete the rest. Another nice thing about the format of this list is that it's arranged based on category. So we're looking for claws right now. We know that's going to be under the giants category, which is underneath hostile creatures, giants. There we go. There's claws right there. And let's just grab the parameter now before we copy paste. Always. That's the parameter we want to use. Always. But yeah, that should be the finished look of our world gen override for the overworld. So go ahead and save and close the window. 
All right, now we're ready to do World Gen Override for the caves. Now, it's basically the same process. The only difference is there's an extra preset that you have to use to designate that this world should be generated with the caves preset. So we have a preset here called DST Cave. But other than that, you enter overrides exactly the same way as you do for the forest world. So on Electrolyze list, we're going to navigate to the caves list. And here's everything we can put for world settings in the caves. And tell you what, I like fighting Fuel Weaver a lot, so I'm going to set the gateway to fast so that it resets more often. I'm going to set Cave Worm attacks to a little bit less. I really dislike Grass Geckos in the caves, so I'm just going to turn them off completely. All right, so I got my notes for myself in the overrides, so I'm going to look for geckos first. Geckos will be under creatures, I believe. Yeah, grass gecko morphing. And I want that completely off, so that's going to be never. Copy-paste the whole line. And never. Let's see, gateway, that's going to be under world. So let's see, global survivors, world, ancient gateway. There we go. So we're going to set that to what's the... What's the, the above default? Fast. Oh, just fast. Okay. Copy paste the whole line. Fast. That's it. All right. Worm attacks. Little. That's also going to be under world, I believe. Oh, right under ancient gateway. There we go. Copy. Paste. Wait, what was it again? Oh, rare. That's what we want. Rare. All right. And that is our cave overrides. Save it. Close it. All right, it is time to fire up the server and see if the settings got properly configured. All right, both the master and the caves are fired up. We should be able to browse. We go to our LAN servers. There it is, tutorial world. And let's check the world gen settings. So, in forest, we should have... Nothing. Oops, I found the boo-boo. Look at that. That's because... I tried manually entering regrowth <laughs> line instead of copy pasting directly from the uh, list. So I'm going to reload the world and see if uh, this file gets read a little better this time. All right, server started back up. Let's try this again. Tutorial world, what do we got? There we go. Hound attacks, that's little wildfires off, regrowth completely off. Okay, that seems to be working now. Awesome. And then if we go to caves, Okay, I did the world gen override correctly for the cave. So the ancient gateway is fast, cave worm attacks are little, and grass geckos are turned off. So that works. Awesome. Now, let's say that you make your world and you realize, oh crap, I don't have enough hound's teeth, said every GST player ever. I want to set hounds back to default. How do we do that? Well, easier than you think. First thing we're going to do is C, shut down each of the dedicated servers. Okay, so here's how I like to change world settings. Back in the dedicated server folder, go to your master shard. Now, this file right here, we're going to make a backup of it. So we're gonna copy and paste. It's gonna just make a copy right in the folder. And I'm gonna name this to something that's easy to remember, like uh, hounds less, right? Because that's what we're changing. The new world gen override's gonna have default hounds. So this way, if you ever want to switch between different world settings, it's as easy as renaming a couple of files. So now we're going to edit our world gen override file. We're going to go to hounds and we're going to just change that back to default. Or you know what else you could do? You could just delete it altogether because if it's not in the file, then it's default. So go ahead and save it. Close it. Let's fire the servers back up. All right, servers back up. Let's see what we got. Hounds are default. That's it. All right, let's do one more example. Let's say we want to enable an event on the world. Let's say we want to get Winter's Feast turned on on our save. So we go into the Master Shard. We're going to, again, make a copy of the World Gen Override, and we're going to name this one, let's see. Uh, this is when we put Hounds to default. So we're just going to call it Default Event, just to easily remember. Now, going to open up this guy. We're going to add a new line right here. Uh, let's find the special event line in Electrolyze list. Oh, it's right at the top. Special event, default, and then parameter we want is winters underscore feast. That's super easy. All right, so we're going to triple click this line, copy, and paste it right in there. And default is going to be changed to winters feast. Delete the rest of the comment. And that should be good to go. But yeah, let's save it. 
fire up our servers again and see if the event gets changed. My understanding of this global category of world settings is that you can set them on the master shard and they will automatically apply to all of your other shards. So for example, you don't necessarily need to set Winter's Feast as an event on both your master and your cave shards. Just set it on the master shard and it will apply automatically to all the shards. Same with season lengths and uh, day night cycle. One other interesting thing about the world gen override file is that we now have the ability to set presets for both world gen and settings separately. And if you make a preset, for example, a DST cave, when you start up the server, it'll automatically split those into both the world gen preset and the settings preset. Now this is helpful when you're trying to use the settings from a preset, but you don't necessarily want to change the way the world generates and vice versa. Versa. The only preset that this seems to apply to right now is the No Giants preset because you'll notice you've got the so the No Giants preset basically takes out all of the Reign of Giants content, tries to emulate a vanilla world. So it takes out stuff like frog rain, wildfires, uh, a few mobs like. Oh yeah, and it removes the giants, but it also messes with world generation a little bit. You see, it'll remove like cactuses, it'll remove buzzards, mole burrows, uh, volt goats. Say you want the way the world generates, but you don't necessarily want the settings that come with the preset, you could use just the generation preset now. So just another cool thing you could do with world gen override. That's all there really is to changing the world settings. I know that in a previous video, I showed how to basically copy paste the level data override files from a client hosted game directly into your dedicated server. While the method still works for me, there's no guarantee that it will continue to work. The developers mentioned in this update that that method will not be supported and could possibly stop working in future updates. So while it's a bit of extra work to build these files ourselves, it will be better practice in the long run. I'm hoping that eventually Clay can provide a tool for automatically generating these world gen override files, the same way that they provide server settings files via the Clay account page. But until that happens, I hope that you found this info useful. Thanks for watching, enjoy messing around with all the new world settings, and see you next time.